In this session, I will introduce the Kaaba and explain its purpose and why pilgrims circle around the Kaaba seven times. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Atif Dost. Today is 28th December 2022 and 4th Jamadul Akhira 1444. The title is Cracking the Kaaba Code, Introduction, Kaaba, the Forbidden House. What is the Kaaba? This is the introduction for the non-Muslims. If you are a Muslim, you can skip the first three minutes of this video. The Kaaba is a cubicle building in the center of the Forbidden Mosque, masjid -e haram located in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. No other mosque in the world has the Kaaba except the Forbidden Mosque. The Kaaba has a door. There are no windows or sunrooms. On the corner, closer to the door, is a special stone mounted called the Black Stone, Hijra Aswad. It is a forbidden house, therefore no one lives in it. Next to the Kaaba, there is a semicircular wall. This area is called Hatayim or Hatim or Hijra Ismail, the stone of Ismail a.s. In the left picture, people are circling around the Kaaba, and in the right picture, people are performing the daily prayers or worship. This is Salah. Top view showing the Kaaba during Salah. The word Salah means prayer or worship. Generally, there are five daily prayers, during Salah, all other rituals stop. A person must face the Kaaba during the Salah. Likewise, the front of all the mosques also points to the Kaaba. This ritual can be performed at home or in any mosque globally. Is a Tawaf. The word Tawaf means to walk around or to make the rounds, to circle or circumambulate something. In our context, Tawaf is a ritual of circling around the Kaaba. The Tawaf starts from the black stone, Hijra Aswad, mounted on the corner of the Kaaba. The red line points to the black stone. The direction of orbits is from the left to the right, around the semicircular wall, over and back to the black stone. This completes one circle. Each person must complete seven circles or orbits around the Kaaba to complete a tawaf. This ritual must be performed in the masjid -e haram forbidden mosque, Mecca, Saudi Arabia. This is a very basic intro of the Kaaba, Salah, and tawaf. Now we will discuss what is the purpose of all this. Why Allah made the Kaaba and its rituals? Why Allah made the Kaaba? The top portion of the ayah explains who made the Kaaba and for whom it was made, and bottom portion explains why he made it. Chapter 5, Al Maida 97. <laughs> ذلك لتعلموا أن الله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وأن الله بكل شيء عليم. So who made the Kaaba? Allah made the Kaaba, the forbidden house. And for whom it was made? Established for all the people, mankind, not just for the Muslims. But when we visit someone's house, we abide by their rules. It's a polite thing to do. What else he made? And the forbidden month, and the offering, and the necklaces or bits. Now we will focus on the necklaces and the orbits. So here are the examples of necklaces and the orbits. In the left picture, pilgrims orbiting the Kaaba, and in the right picture, people performing prayer, forming the necklaces. So why Allah made the Kaaba? The answer is in the bottom portion. For you to know that Allah knows what is in the skies and the earth. To show us what is in the skies. This is the purpose. 
since we are in the 21st century and we also know a thing or two about these guys, let's find out how our knowledge compare. First we'll, first we'll see what Allah has created in these guys, then compare with what we have observed in these guys. What is in these guys? Chapter 65, At-Talaq, Ayah 12. Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin wa min al-ardi mithlahunna yatanazzalu al-amru baynahunna lita'alamu anna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir wa anna allaha qad ahata bi kulli shay'in alma. It is Allah who created seven skies and from the earth like them. He reveals the command between them for you to know that Allah has power over everything and that Allah definitely encompasses everything with knowledge. So the point to take from here is Allah has created the seven skies and from the earth like them, similar in number, that is seven earth-like objects. The other thing to remember is that he encompasses everything with knowledge, not magic and miracles. So what are these seven earth-like objects in the sky? What are these seven earth-like objects in the sky? Now, this picture is our understanding of the solar system in the 21st century, according to International Astronomical Union, IAU. And every fifth grade student in our age knows about this the sun and the eight planets. And their names from the left to right are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. This is the latest and the truest understanding of our solar system. However, there is a discrepancy. Quran said, وَمِنَ الْأَرْضِ From the earth, you will see seven similar objects in the sky. Do you know why seven? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Why Quran says there are seven earth-like objects or planets in the sky, not eight. Yes, you got that right. Because the eighth is under your feet. You're standing on it. You'll never see it in the sky. You'll see it under your feet. That's where the life is. So seven planets in the sky and seven skies. Therefore, seven orbits. He has explained our solar system from our perspective with precision for our understanding, demonstrating his knowledge of what is in the skies. The next slide, the next slide will clarify any doubts. This slide makes it very clear what Allah meant by that he made the Kaaba and its rituals that you may know that Allah knows what is in the skies and the earth. Now listed in this slide are the similarities between our solar system and the Tawaf orbits around the Kaaba. So here we go, point to point. The sun is in the center of the solar system. Therefore, the Kaaba is in the center of the Forbidden Mosque. The planets orbit the sun counterclockwise. A Muslim orbits the Kaaba counterclockwise. The planets orbit in an elliptical elongated path. A Muslim orbits in an elliptical elongated path because of al hatayn Seven planets can be seen in the sky. That is why every Muslim goes around the Kaaba seven times. Hajj, meaning the pilgrimage. The grandest of Tawaf circumambulation takes place during Hajj. So I asked Google in which Islamic month Hajj is performed or the pilgrimage is performed. 
The grandest of the Vav circumambulation of Kaaba takes place in the 12th month during Hajj. Why? Because that's when the earth is completing its own orbit around the sun. The ritual of Tawaf is a simulation of our solar system, clearly demonstrating the knowledge of Allah, Al Alim, the knower of all mysteries. Note for our understanding, and to be very clear, He is speaking from our perspective, not His perspective. So without visiting our planet in a physical form, Allah has explained the solar system in detail by implementing a ritual called Tawaf in his house, the Kaaba, for the generations to come. This is the reason previous two statements ended by saying, Allah, or the God, has knowledge of everything. Anyone without complete knowledge cannot create anything and cannot be a God. This concept of Godship is so basic, so fundamental, and so common in the Muslim world that it is considered a child's play. A 10-year-old can tell you this. Now, retrospectively speaking, in the grand scheme of things, or grand scheme of creation, the God chose our solar system as his house because this is where he placed the intelligent life with free will that can appreciate him. And he made this house Kaaba for all mankind to celebrate him by, simul by simulating the solar system. Without it, none of us would exist. So what happened to the planet Pluto? We all remember the ninth planet, especially my generation. Now I want to tell you a little story how all of this started for me. When I was growing up, I was taught that there are nine planets, that is including the Pluto. Once I passed my fifth grade, the solar system stuck with me. Then in my youth years, I learned in the Quran that Allah has created seven skies and seven earth-like objects. And that stuck with me too. From time to time, the thought crossed my mind and I wondered. Years gone by until one day my daughter asked, Dad, can you please help me with an assignment? So I said, sure. What is it about? She said, it's about the solar system. Then I asked, how many planets are there in our solar system? She replied, eight planets. At first, I didn't believe. However, this turned out to be a pivotal moment in my development and learning. I said, no, there are nine planets. She said, no, there are eight planets. Of course, when I Googled, I realized she's right, that there are eight planets now. Pluto, the ninth planet, was demoted or downgraded from his status of being a planet. Because the reason is a planet must do three things. It must be orbiting the sun. It, number two, it has sufficient mass to assume hydrostatic equilibrium, simply meaning it forms a nearly a round shape. And third point is it must clear other objects from its orbital path. And Pluto failed to clear its orbital path, therefore lost its status of being a planet. And this happened in August 2006. The International Astronomical Union downgraded the status of Pluto to be a dwarf planet. Just as an FYI, Eris is another dwarf planet which is bigger than Pluto, located in the same region, the Kuiper Belt. Cresco to enter the boundary. In the left picture, the forbidden area Haram, shown in green, and the Miqat are the entry points, shown as circles. 
Just like an astronaut wears a special suit to enter the space, a pilgrim wears a special dress code called Ehram before crossing into the Haram, the forbidden area. On the right is the picture of the Ehram. Notice the left shoulder is covered. We cover the left shoulder. In the left picture, electromagnetic field protecting the Earth from the solar wind is shown. On the right is the dress code for pilgrims called Iram. Notice the left shoulder is always covered, pointing to the symbol of the sun, that is the Kaaba, during the orbits or Tawaf. It is too coincidental that we cover our left shoulder and not the right shoulder. We are simply simulating the protection provided by the electromagnetic field against the solar wind by covering the left shoulder. I have almost reached the end of my presentation. However, here is a question I would like to leave you with. If and when the humans travel to a planet in a distant galaxy where the solar system is quite different to ours, what will the Muslims do on that planet? I really wonder. My point is this. This is the reason the Lord of the Worlds, Rabbul Alameen, did not mention explicitly to go circle the Kaaba seven times. Because who knows what happens in the future? I'll leave it up to you to decide. These are the references. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.